Hello everyone, uh, this is Kenneth and Lori, and we're here for our class number three for our legacy video. And um, we're coming to you from Ruth's Prayer Garden in the um, beautiful Asheville, North Carolina at the Billy Graham Training Center. Uh, this is called Ruth's Prayer Garden because it's where Ruth Graham and wanted the, to be the family cemetery. In fact, she called it the launching pad. That was her plan, to be the launching pad to go to heaven. Uh, Billy and all the family, Franklin, and the whole family was to be buried here. But when they built the museum and the library, I mean, in Charlotte, North Carolina, they decided that would be the family grave. So instead, they built this incredible retreat center. Great place for individuals or couples uh, to get away uh, I haven't seen any children around here. It's probably more of an adult place for coming together, for solitude, for retreat. And so Lori and I are here celebrating our 34th anniversary. I surprised her. I succeeded in surprising her. Uh, we, we came up here. We've been doing this retreat and spending time uh, walking trails and just this beautiful, beautiful place. And just, uh, hey, if the Lord's going to come again and I can't, I, I can't be in Jerusalem, why not be on Billy Graham's property? I feel like that's a good place to be. So we want to talk to you a little bit. Thought we'd just have a little different video other than the one coming from the balcony at the church building. So uh, today we want to talk about the... Uh, did I say anything about the chapel behind us? I don't think mm -hmm. I did. I did? Okay. Yeah. All right. I did. She said I did, so therefore I did. So today we want to talk about uh, sort of the habits. And since we're here on a personal retreat, um, we think it's uh, important to talk again about the importance of your relationship with God and you having your own personal relationship with God. So, And then we'll go also into some of the things that we said we would talk about uh, related to the fruit of the Spirit in habit number two. So habit number one is to develop your own walk, to read the Bible daily, daily to read the Word daily, uh, to spend time praying the Word for yourself and praying the Lord's Prayer listening to the Spirit and practicing doing God's will. So what we wanted to do today is Lori wants to share. We're going to share a God experience that we've had, a God moment, okay? So uh, she is going to share how it started and um, with a dream that she had. So here we go. Turn it over to her. So last week after we left the church building from doing that video and we had talked about, you know, hey, we're going to go into the fruit of the Spirit and all that, I started, you know, thinking about and actually went to bed that night praying about, you know, you all, the, the parents, us, the parents um, of this time period and what all the different needs that we have and, and praying about how to communicate to you um, through this class you know, the things that we want to try to communicate. And of course, the number one thing, the habit number one, was the habit of having your own walk with Christ. And we feel like that's vitally important. It's pointless to go further if you don't have that. You really are not gonna be able to raise children uh, that love the Lord if you don't love it. You can't, you can't pass on something. You can't bequeath something that you don't have. And we've talked about that quite a bit. <laughs> Y'all are probably getting tired of it, but when I went to sleep uh, that night, I had a dream, and the dream was, I believe, directly related to and an answer to my prayer, and what it was, was it was, uh, I was inside of an airplane cabin, and, uh, you know, I'm just telling you kind of how the Lord was talking to me in this. Uh, we live in a fallen world. Okay, so I want you to think about an airplane that's just flying along, doing great, everything's great, and then all of a sudden, one of the engines goes bad, and then the second engine goes bad, and the plane starts to fall, okay? And I'm sitting there with a child. What is the stewardess going to tell me to do? And you, if you've been on the airplane ever, you've heard her say this, she's gonna tell you first, you put your own mask on and then you turn to the child that's with you and make sure that they have their mask on and I knew exactly what that dream was about I knew that the Lord was saying 
you can't keep someone alive physically or spiritually or if you are already dead or dying spiritually you have to be alive you have to be awake spiritually you have to be growing spiritually you have to have oxygen <laughs> um, and that oxygen comes from your walk with the Lord and so I, I, I just want you all to keep that picture in your mind about the fact that I want to be alive spiritually walking with Jesus so that my children will be able to have that bequeathed to them and that I can get that oxygen mask properly on them because I'm still alive. <laughs> and so, um, Kim basically I the first habit, the first habit is about that. And the other habits are all about you taking your oxygen and giving it to, uh, the children. Okay. Let's... Right. So, and, and then I'm going to share another part of the, of the whole night of, you know, what was going on in a few minutes, but I wanted to tell you a, a cool God story. Um, Kenneth, we were all together a couple weeks ago for the burial of Kenneth's dear sister Penny that he loved very much. And uh, we were with a lot of, of course, all of her children and all of the cousins and all that. And one of the very special people that we got to be with was a girl named Chris. And she is married to Kenneth's sister Penny's son, Drew. And I was frustrated because I think she's such a cool person and I didn't really get to have any one-on-one -on -one time with her and I was kind of frustrated about that. Well, this morning- Cool, cool little piece of information about her. She is a professional roller, roller derby athlete. <laughs> roller derby, Which yeah. Is so fun. She's sweet as can be, but obviously very tough. Have she's you ever seen roller derby? Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, um, so this morning, I was uh, answering some uh, comments on Facebook about some stuff and another one of the cousins had posted, you know, if you are over 30 and you have any advice for a woman in her 20s, please share it. And so I shared something and then, and then pretty quick after that, Chris, uh, Drew's wife, shared something. and I the thing that was so bizarre about it was is it was about that you've got to have your oxygen mask on before you can you know minister to or help somebody else you've got to be well and um so i quickly opened up my messenger and you know messaged her and said oh chris i loved your advice and then i told her about my dream and how that had that whole concept had been on my mind and how we were going to be sharing that in a parenting class and of course she was just thrilled to death and you know we started talking back and forth about that and um she was talking about how that that the lord had been showing her how that she had to take care of herself so that she could take care of others and she's got a lot of people to take care of they've got um, several children and you know in the family and all that so she's got a lot to take care of and so anyway so i finished you know talking to her on messenger and closed that out and then I was going to go on into my quiet time for the morning, but I was so excited about getting to talk to Chris that I told Kenneth about that whole thing. And so, you know, he was interested because he loves her too and thinks that she's awesome. So... This is my part of the story. Yes. So this then. is my part of the story. <laughs> so I'm doing my quiet time and I'm reading from... I'm telling you, this is the best devotional writer there is. One day devotionals always... It's crazy. Always a spirit-filled, spirit-led devotional. His name's Chris Tigran. He has tons of books. They're just one page a day that will shake and rock your world. So anyway, so I was reading the devotional. Right? She literally, within seconds, <laughs> within seconds after she told me that, I looked down and I start to read my devotional. And it's entitled, Intimacy with God. And he always has a scripture and Psalm 63 5 you satisfy me more than the richest feast I will praise you with songs of joy now here's what he wrote the familiar safety speech of flight attendants always seems to encourage selfishness in cases of emergency what I mean how often you hear people talking about the safety features of flight attendants well I'll go on 
They tell you that if the oxygen masks drop, you should put yours on first before attempting to help your children or anyone else. That goes against a parent's instinct, of course, but it makes perfect sense. If you are incapacitated, you won't be of help to those around you. In order to give, True. you <laughs> actually have to be in a position to give. That familiar illustration points to an important spiritual truth that most believers know, but few practice. If we aren't being nourished by the Spirit of God, we will not be able to nourish others with anything of spiritual value. We see this from time to time when vocational pastors are so busy with ministry activities that they burn out or begin to show the cracks in their foundation that have been left unattended. Maintaining a balance between intimacy with God, nourishment, and ministry with God, nourishing, is vital. So anyway, he goes on, he says, the old expression about being too heavenly minded to be of any earthly good is wrong. The world needs people who are heavenly minded, who have spent time experiencing God's presence and communing with him. A heart that embraces the attitude David expressed at the beginning of Psalm 63, a thirst and longing for God himself will eventually be satisfied and in being satisfied will be well positioned to help others find the satisfaction they crave too. Fulfillment is contagious. People are drawn to those who know their God and are satisfied in him. There is no greater testimony, no more matter how selfless any other attitude appears. Let your soul be filled with the power and presence of God. Then pour him out on those around you. Your fulfillment reflects him well. And he went on and he talked also about the importance of spending time with God and that there's nothing more important. Now, I know as parents, probably more than any other group of people, we make excuses why we don't have time to be intimate with God because of the children, because of our jobs, because of all the things going on. And the truth is, Been all there. those <laughs> things are significant. But yep. one of the things that Tigran said in the next devotional I read was that there's nothing more important or more vital to your life than un absolutely unquestionable the fact that uh, un, I can't even think of the word right now I'm sorry but the fact that you will always spend time with God no matter what you do and I know I don't do a lot of things right but don't mess with me in my time with God my life would be a mess if I didn't do it it is not that's why I was looking for non-negotiable right. it is as vital as any appointment I have I've missed appointments because I won't miss an appointment with God I have nothing to offer if I don't spend time with God. And it is not right, absolutely not right to say you can be too heavenly minded. I have yet to meet, well, it's not true. I have met some people that were too heavenly minded, I guess. Their, their heads were in the clouds. I don't know if it was because of God, but anyway, they thought they, they, were, they were thinking crazy. Oh, perfect cue. So that's the chapel behind us. So that being said, another thing that came through that reading that's part of this is, is and while we're telling you this story is we're talking about developing your own walk, therefore giving the oxygen to those that you love, taking it yourself, then giving it to others. As Lori said many times, you can't give what you don't have yourself, but also listening to the Spirit. What we have just told you is an example of how God works around us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our God is alive. We were even questioned. I'll just be honest about a conversation we had about what to talk about here. And we were talking about, is this too much? It, and no, it's not too much. <laughs> and the reason I say that is, and I'll just be honest, in a lot of our uh, churches, we have just made God out to be somebody in a book. Our God is alive. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. And when you read the book, then you, you, you experience, and as you spend time in the Word and you spend time in prayer, you begin to see and hear all around you God's activity. And, and we, don't, we don't think that's a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. There's no thinking it was, about it. <laughs> it was a dream, and then what I call a book ending to that dream by reading what Chris put on that Facebook post, and then he double-dog dared us to forget it by giving us bigs on the exact day. And of course, it was the wrong day because Kenneth's behind on his devotionals. His, but well, I was behind by, for by a giving us that yeah. illustration 
for the third time. So the dream and then Chris's post and then right behind it, this. And that's not coincidental, that's God working. And, and I know so some of you wanna... literal people will be saying, oh, come on, that book was written in 2019. So that's, that's right. And the Bible was written 2000 years ago. So <laughs> God does things in his timing, in his way. And as I said, every single day of our lives, we will find him working and him active. So we and want... sharing that with our kids is big. Okay. Okay. Next. So I just wanted to say that, that so we don't want, when he's saying that we, and, and we're praying about his class, we don't want to ignore that. We want to do, and so we don't, you know, we don't want to be repetitive. We don't want to bore you. We want this to be relevant. But at the same time, we, we know that that's really <laughs> the crux of the matter is where you are. That's the crux of it. And it kind of leads to the second part of, and I can't remember, I think I may have been awake when this part happened. In fact, I know I was because I, I woke up pretty soon after I had that dream and I was pondering it and thinking about it. And then I had this thought about the next habit, which the next habit is to uh, display the fruit of the spirit in your home to your children. And we talked about last week that we would talk about that. So we don't want to you know, we want to, we are going to talk about that for a while, but we wanted to talk about it a little bit today. And this second part that, that I felt like the Lord gave me was another illustration. Um, back in the sixties and seventies, people used to, you know, want everybody used to smoke cigarettes. That was just part of life before we really knew how bad they were for you. And so, um, my parents personally did not smoke, but I had a lot of members of my, uh, extended family that did and so we would, when we would go to my grandmother's house for holidays and festival times and things like that um, especially in the winter time you know you'd be in the house and you know five or six people are smoking cigarettes in the house and literally you could not see there'd be so much cigarette smoke in the house it would be you know especially if we were playing rook and it was getting later at night it would be literally like you'd have to cut with a knife the, the atmosphere and I felt like the Lord reminded me of that because I love my extended family. They are treasures, every single one of them. We're all very close. We love being together. We laugh like crazy. We have such a good time, but I'm allergic to cigarette smoke. <laughs> and so that atmosphere, while I loved being there, I actually felt better after I left and could get some fresh air. <laughs> And, and I think that is exactly what happens in homes that are Christian homes. We love each other, but we're not displaying the fruit of the Spirit. And what's the other option? If the fruit of the Spirit is not being displayed, like love and joy and peace and patience with people and kindness, you can't teach somebody not to be rude and not to, you can't teach somebody to be polite if you're unkind um and so all of those fruit have to be there if they're not there your children are going to grow up in a home that's full of the sins of the flesh that's the only other option there's either fruit of the spirit or sins of the flesh and kenneth's going to read that to you in a minute but what you know we want you to think about is are my children going to feel better after they leave home and they get out of the toxicity that's there or are they going to leave sad because that home that they are coming out of is the safest most loving most wonderful place they ever go and and that's the choice it's either and and of course we're always you know i try to make sure people understand that that i don't think i always walk in the spirit i don't <laughs> You know, I, just, I have days where I wake up and I am not in the spirit and I am doing all the things to Kenneth that he doesn't want me to do, you know, in terms of being short with him. And me, on the other hand, I'm always in the spirit. <laughs> but but, but the, the goal is for our homes to not be toxic to our children. They need to know love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. 
but they're not going to sit around the dinner table and gossip with mom and dad. That doesn't happen in our house. We are good. We're faithful. We're kind. Um, you know, and I could go into a million other scenarios, but what, what we want you to do this week is think about the, the atmosphere of my home. Are my children going to feel better after they leave? And Kenneth's going to read that. Well, first. I mean, you already, you already quoted that. It says, okay. against such things, there's no law. And I think that, that the key to it, though, again, has to go back to that your relationship with, with God. Because, um, um, you know, like we're here on this retreat, and a lot of people would think this is weird. We're two peas in a pod. We're, <laughs> we're, we're spiritual nerds. There's no doubt about it. But the reason we are, we've not always been that way, is because the deeper we get into a relationship with God, the deeper we want to go. And that's what we want to do to relax. Oh, let's go somewhere where we can just do it all the time and do it out in nature where everything's great. And we're going to have to close this video pretty soon because it's supposed to be a prayer garden and we're talking and it's supposed to be a place of meditation. But anyway, maybe somebody's needed to hear what we had to say. But uh, uh, so, so be aware of that and be aware of exactly what she was saying. Those are such an important um, characteristic because we're fallen and we are... We are we're not perfect. We don't always walk in the spirit. And even if we are breathing in first, and even if we are spending time in the Lord, we still have times when we're not in the spirit. Especially, we found that to be true in parenting. Uh, parenting um, is not for not for chickens. You know, it's not <laughs> uh, it's not um, it's not easy. Uh, you know, when you got children that are constantly saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, and it's hard. And you got children that are just pulling on your leg all the time or, or, or you have a victory and everything's, ah, I got through. And then, you know, five minutes later, it's like, I didn't get through. It's like, they're just going back to doing that. You know, we, um, that's where that sanity has to come from God and that relationship. And so, because otherwise in the flesh we will react to in a toxic nature we will react in anger instead of with self-control and we'll react with um, uh, with impatience instead of patience mean instead of kind and um, and so um, it's just we want to create a place for our children that is a haven there's discipline yes we discipline them because we we got to train them. We're, we're, we're the part that's the beginning. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I mean, our, it's, for people like me that wants to be everybody's buddy, it was hard for me to train my children in the fear of the Lord. But if they're not going to learn it at home, they're not going to learn it. So the first thing we have to do is have that relationship where we're in awe of God. We know that God is real and that we're walking with God. And then we can transfer that um, to our children in their lives. I think we'll probably, when we have a place where we can, uh, we're not in public, you know, we can go, we're going to go deeper into the fruit of the Spirit uh, and talking about that. I think we've both got some stories about, you know, times when we weren't. <laughs> maybe we need to get permission from our children before yeah. we tell the stories, but, uh, but that's part of why we're doing this because I think we got some stories that, and we're on the other side, hopefully. It appears that we're on the other side of that. Our children are 32, 30, and 20. One's going to be 23 tomorrow. So uh, we uh, uh, we look forward to doing that. So prayers for you. Um, something you can do as a family during this time, as you consider all this, you can also join in with the 714 each night as a family. Do that and pray. Uh, pray Second Chronicles 714. Read it and pray for God to heal our land. That's a very real thing that you can be doing in this very real time of crisis that we're in. Love you all. Blessings. Um, and we will talk to you later.